What's the crack, lads? Today we're going to be reviewing and recommending the best free nominating contracts. I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, the best free nominating contract players, which ones to avoid, which ones to actually sign and use your nominating contract on and train up, the best build. I'm going to show you the best guide for the best player of the pack. And also we're going to show you the quickest and easiest way to get more nominating contracts if you don't have any. Let's go. All right, so this is probably one of the better packs that they've released in a while for free nominating contract players. You've got, you know, very unique players in here in Giroud. Uh, who can play in goals or play up front. We've also signed Alaba. Alaba is the top pick, lads. There's no point beating around the bush. I'm going to show you why he's probably the top pick that they've released in a long time with these nominating contracts. We also have Minamino, who's down as a four-star. You've got a couple of guys that I would definitely avoid. We'll get to that in a second. We are going to start with the four-star guys here. There's two four-star players. Alaba is the top pick. I mean, that is the short answer to which is the best player in here. I'm going to show you why at the end of the video with some clips and stuff. But Reed here, Bobby Reed is a very, very good player. If you are starting off and you have a nominating contract, you can see there that I've got six four-star nominating contracts. I'll probably end up buying this guy um, and just trialing him out. The problem is, is that, you know, wingers and attacking midfielders such as Kang, which you'll see in a second, and Minamino, these guys are a dime a dozen. There's so many good fast players. Now, there is a couple of weaknesses in this card, but he does have 26 levels which isn't too bad for a starter right winger. Minamino is obviously an interesting one as well. He's down as an AMF whole player. A lot of where the game is gone now is more to do with player AI and player style and how they actually control on the pitch. Song Krasen is definitely an upgrade on Minamino in my opinion, but this guy is still very, very nice. If you've just dipped into the game very recently and you didn't get Song Krasen or the free Neymar, you know, if you don't actually want to play with those cards, Minamino is definitely worth investing a few skills into. You can give him flip-flop and he'll have a really, really, really overpowered skill move to be able to just rinse Maldini, Puyol, any defender. It doesn't matter. So for a four-star, I definitely think that these guys are worth it. Minamino specifically, I think he is the four-star pick of the pack. Now, we talked about at the start of the video when we were introducing this, the quickest way of uh, clearing the match pass. This is how you get contracts. So once you play 15 matches on the free match pass, regular match pass, you get a nominating contract that's a five star and you'll also have unlocked a four star nominating contract as you see there. I would definitely recommend the golden goal. It doesn't matter, lads, you know, put your pride aside all you have to do is enter this and literally either you score or your opponent scores. You can let your opponent score and just farm the match pass very, very effectively and clear the match pass extremely effectively. Now, also, that will free up the spot to be able to get Minamino and also a five-star contract as well. So, um, as you can see, there's a couple here that I would avoid. Jolington, Darmian and Kang are kind of similar cards, right? Darmian, again, we have that same issue that depending on where you are playing in the game, Listen, lads, video games are meant to be fun, man. That's the biggest thing with video games. I buy players certain at certain times that I just want to play with. There's no rhyme or reason to actually, you know, taking out Maldini to play Darmian instead of him or taking out Costa Corta to play Alaba. Um, but I definitely think Jolington and Darmian are both weak enough players, even in their respective positions. Now, obviously, you can play with them and you can boss midfield with them because all players have a certain balance to them that they can pass, shoot, dribble, block, everything. Messi can defend in this game and intercept the ball as good as, you know, most players that have high aggression and high defensive stats. Jolington and Darmian, I think, are weaker cards, though, even with their player levels. Kang, again, he's on to something similar like Minamino. Now, the thing I like about Kang is that he can play left, right, uh, uh, wing or midfield, and he also can play through the middle. He's a creative playmaker. He's got double touch. He's got soul control. You give him flip flap, he's going to have ball roll. One touch pass is always nice as well. Very similar to Minamino, but again, I find it very hard to move off San Krasen as a free to play player. Obviously, on my main squad, I've got Honus, I've got Musiala, I've got Cantona, I've got, you know, anyone that I want to play in attacking midfield, Ronaldinho. But Lee Kang is definitely a good player for free to play if you don't or don't like using, if you don't have or don't like using the free name or the San Krasen. We talked about Giroud before as well. A lot of people actually missed out on the player of the week, Giroud, who could play in goals and center forward. And this guy is definitely a way of Konami probably hearing that feedback and saying, do you know what? Let's give people the opportunity to use a five-star nominating contract to get a super sub Giroud who can come on in goals or come on up front. Now, his stats are atrocious for goalkeeper. You know, honestly, his stats are atrocious. You are doing yourself a really big disservice by having his stats this low. He has 70 reflexes. Um, but honestly, lads, I mean, if you were coming up against a good player, 
they're just going to pepper shots against Giroud. And the goalkeepers at the moment are a bit dodgy anyway, so I definitely wouldn't recommend playing him apart from banter. Now, Cancelo is a player that definitely runs Alaba close for top pick of this pack um, and this selection. I'm a big fan of Cancelo. He's definitely better in eFootball than he is in real life. Although he has kind of he has kind of started to beast again now for Barcelona. It's been a really good move for him. The thing with fullback finishers is that his AI is going to be a little bit different. Now, this guy actually has ball roll from the rip. So to have a right midfielder or right back that can play in those both positions as well as left back, that's super, super comfortable on the ball. I definitely would recommend him as your attacking option, whichever side you're playing him. So you can play him left back and have a right back defensive midfield or a right back defensive right back fullback, um, such as wan or somebody like that. His stats are really, really strong. He's got 26 levels. If this guy had 31 or 2 levels, he would be a godly card up there with Bergomi and stuff. Um, well, maybe not Bergomi, but with, you know, the likes of Roberto Carlos and those guys. But there is only one pick for me, lads, and it is David Alaba. Now, we played with David Alaba all stream yesterday. He's an absolute demon. One thing I will say about Alaba is I definitely feel that he's probably best suited as kind of a utility man rather than a kind of like set down uh, in one position style player. Now, yesterday when I was playing, people in the chat were saying, yeah, you need to try him DMF, you need to try him here. The problem I have on my main profile is probably, uh, you know, a problem that a lot of people have. I have Vieira, Rijkaard and Makalele as my defensive core, as well as the new Stevie G. Um, so I kind of trained Alaba up as a CB, which I think he is really good. But as I played more and more into the stream yesterday, I started to play Alaba with a sub tactic as a left back, kind of like a marauding left back as a replacement for Carlos. And I'm going to show you just one clip here that sums it up. The reason why you play high defensive guys up the pitch a little bit is literally to turn over the ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is why Alaba and Carlos and those type of guys can be really effective. You'll see here, he gets on a ball. He's got excellent dribbling for a left back or a center back or a DMF. You can play him across any position, which is very, very nice to have utility players. Lays the ball off. Jared doesn't get it. And then he's out in front of Saka and he just retains possession with a lovely left foot flick. And then he's going to just switch back on with a pass from his right foot. So that is why I would definitely think that Alaba is best suited as a backup to your main left back. I don't think that you can play him DMF if you have Vieira. It's very hard to, you know, it's very, very hard to recommend dropping Makalele, dropping Vieira, dropping Rijkaard just to shoehorn in Alaba because he's a free nominating contract player. But in saying that, if you do not have these top, 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 top class players, Alaba can definitely be one of your best center backs in the game. I mean, I definitely think Alaba and Cancelo can can literally get you to Division 1 very easily. They're so strong. Minamino attacking midfielder, if you're literally just starting the game, can be beautiful. So those are my recommendations. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to see some gameplay with Cancelo, I have multiple versions of Cancelo, so it's kind of hard for me to spin a five-star on him when I have like literally five or six sitting on the bench that are similar cards or very, very similar cards. Let me know if you guys have any questions, and we'll cover them in the live stream later. Until then, peace.